Josh, man, how are you? Yeah, good. Yourself? Yeah, good. It's been a while. It's been six months. So. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I, I, I saw you. Did I not see you on the last tour that we did? You did. You did very briefly. Very briefly. Very briefly. Yeah. So like oh, look. Oh, you got. You, look, I get it. When you guys have got, when, when you're on tour, you're not just on stage. Yeah. There's yeah. everything else that comes with that, you know, and especially, yeah. being, especially being a headliner. I mean, it was. I mean, I'll ask you the question in a moment, actually. Like, I got a really, really uh, warm vibe that night from the crowd for your performance, yep. and and a lot of people wanted to. What's the word I'm looking for? They wanted to absorb that after the show was still going. Um, yeah. Is that how you felt with not just that show, the whole tour? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I feel like at this point, you know, we're not some massive band. We're not selling thousands of tickets. And so it still is quite s small and early days. And so the people that are there on, you know, I, I mean, I think that that Adelaide show was like a week night and we didn't go on till 11 or something. Oh, yeah. So you, you've got like 150, 200 people that are there and really they are our true fans. Uh, probably a lot of the other people that might have come if it was on a weekend or something aren't going to be there. So it's it has that vibe of being like, you know, sometimes you play a much bigger show to a much bigger crowd and then maybe half of the crowd or a third of the crowd is like that. But then at those smaller shows, I think the people that are there are like real fans. And it, and it always shows in like the merch sales. Like you can sometimes play a venue with 200 people and then you do the same amount of merch that you do at like a 500 cap. And it's just like those hard out fans are the ones that are, are really there for it. So I, I, I always love always love getting to connect with people. Yeah. At, at oh. Ones like that. And how did the, um, when we'll talk about the EP in a moment, I mean, how did you feel? Because I think we were the first show of the tour as well, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you feel that the, the whole tour went for you guys on the uh, Death to Amuse tour? Yeah, it was really good. Um, we, I mean, we did, like, had some of the biggest shows that we've ever had in New Zealand, especially. Like, New Zealand was crazy. I think we came over and we did a support run with Highly Suspect, and we were playing arenas over here to, like, uh, like highly suspect sell an ungodly amount of tickets. I think that they did 10,000 tickets in wow. Auckland across three shows. Wow. And then they did like 5,000 in Wellington, 4,000 in Christchurch. Like they were like big, big shows and it had an impact. Like we sold out our Christchurch shows and like sold more than we ever have in our hometowns and stuff. So I think it was like, that was probably the the big high. And then obviously playing Max Watts in Melbourne was pretty awesome. Um, Probably the best show of tour which was the same as last tour was in Sydney. What for whatever reason they just go psycho for us. So it was that was probably the the highlight. But the whole thing was amazing. The 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 last question I'll ask about the tour is <laughs> I'm gonna be real cheeky here. And I wouldn't do this if I didn't know you. Um are you noticing that your audience is uh is becoming has quite a few ladies in it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm no, I don't notice that at all, Ian. So I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I've never noticed such a thing. Everyone just yeah. they all just look the same to me. Uh, it's, it's it's arguably the best thing about a Banks Arcade show. Just joking. So. Nah, nah, well, I look, look, it is it is cool. I mean, it's cool to see lots of different people enjoying it. The one, the the main reason I notice it if I'm on stage is because I try not to like get like crazy mosh pits and stuff going because I'm like, there's literally a whole bunch of girls in the front row, and I think someone actually got hurt at the Melbourne show, and I literally had to tell them to like calm down because our fan base is kind of weird. It's probably like guys that train Muay Thai on the weekend. And then mm. girls. So it's like you have like a bunch of like very small humans and then like a bunch of angry guys. And I'm always like seeing stuff unfold and I'm kind of like, yo, let's chill out there. But no, nah, it's it's good to see all different people liking the music. And I mean, it's I feel like having a, an inclusive space where everyone can come in um, and enjoy this type of music that's usually really aggressive is, is cool. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let's talk about the EP. Uh, so normally, what I would do is I'd ask um, like some generic questions about the EP, but we, or and, and obviously a bit about the band. But obviously, I know about the band, so I kind of want to know more for what, especially when I do the review of really what the context of the songs are. Like I get the impression um, through it all, two things actually that came out that stood out. 
there's a lot of dance underneath it. There seems to be a lot of like dance beats behind it or disco yeah. elements. And I know you guys bring in all different styles of music anyway. Then lyrically, it seems to be more uh, almost self-reflective of a of, of, of broken relationships. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with the single, which was Self Help, which is the last song on there. Is that one actually you singing to yourself about that? Yeah, yeah. So the idea behind that, um, it was, it, it came from the fact that one time I was... I was I was having a trip of some kind in my younger years and I was I thought it was a good idea I had two phones somehow I think I had my mate's phone and I called my own phone and I put both phones up to my ear and I was like talking in one ear and hearing it out the other it really wasn't good like it was kind of freaking <laughs> out at the time but I remember I was right I was writing me I was writing one day and I just thought oh man, man, like everything, when you're doing this, it can be so hard and you don't like, you're like, man, am I doing the right thing? You know, should I just stop this? Like, you know, you think it all the time, especially when things are getting really hard and financially and just all the sunk time. And it's like, man, I'd love to have a chat with myself in 20 years and see what happened, see what the outcome was. And that's kind of what self-help is. It was like imagining having a phone call with, with, with yourself in the future and just asking those questions. And I think it kind of finds resolve in the fact that we're never going to get those answers and we just have to keep doing uh, whatever makes us happy and whatever we want to do. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a, obviously it's kind of a bit of a sad song, but there's, there's also a bit of resolve there as well. Yeah. I, and that makes sense because sonically at the beginning as well, where it's the, the acoustic part, now that you've mentioned that, you can almost imagine that being a recording through a phone that someone else has heard. Yeah, well, it's a, in the actual track, it was recorded all as just like a, a room mic. So that's just me playing. So like, so <laughs> that whole intro section is just completely free time and me just like no click or anything and no, you know, it's just basically just the room and then it goes into the next, you know, all the produced stuff. So uh, the likes of uh, Lost Cause, yeah, uh, that definitely sounds like a breakup song. Uh, that's got kind of an R and B rhythm behind it. Before it goes in a disco thing, um, no future sounds like a breakup song. Um, no <laughs> future album. isn't. No future is. isn't. Lost causes, but not no future isn't. So what's no future about then? No future is actually like a COVID song, pretty much. Ah, okay. Like, it's like, um, it's not, I, when I say that, I mean, it was written at that time where everyone was freaking out and I thought that everyone was going mad and that this whole thing was just ridiculous and the way that everyone was behaving online. Like, I mean, I think it, all of these events that happen, they just constantly showcase to me how much people drink the Kool-Aid of, of anything online, like of any side, like I don't get on there and take sides. I'm like, you know, there's people that are going extreme about all these conspiracy theories and all this crazy stuff. And then there's these other people that are like, if you don't wear a mask, you're a racist or, you know, some like some insane thing. And everyone's having this extreme conversation. And at that point it felt like everyone was just going crazy. And there was something about it that I kind of liked, like, like it, like I, like when I found out, man, there's a pandemic and like there's people in China just dying and like turning into zombies. I was kind of like, Whoa, like, let's go. Like, I honestly, I was just like, cause that, that there's something about that chaos that obviously it's bad and there's like bad things that happen, but once everyone starts going crazy, it's bad. But then there's also that side of it that I'm kind of like, Oh, what's going to happen here. And so I think no future is kind of, it's it's just a song really about the fact that 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 shit doesn't scare me not, like not not just COVID but like anything any type of I'm I'm there for it I'm gonna be in the middle of a war zone and probably like feeling more comfortable than I do at a desk job yeah which is what I do during the day thanks man uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, this is my this is what I'm doing when I'm off this call <laughs> so, yeah I'm sat in an office at work now just like yeah, trying yeah. to hide from the boss yeah, yeah exactly. so, so the I, I spoke about this uh, pretty briefly as well earlier like the sound on this EP is different from the sound of what you had on Def 2 Def 2 was a lot more um, uh, it was more the aggressive side of your band yeah. Whereas this seems to be a little bit more um, 
even though the lyrical content is what it is, it tends to have a little bit more of a swagger around it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and, and that kind of a disco feel. And I know you said that there was all parts of a project that are on there. So the two two prong question was the I because I know you've had these songs for ages. So was the idea of this to create that kind of swagger on this one, and therefore is there also a third part coming? Um, I think the, the these two are like quite put together to counterbalance one another. I think like when when I was writing them, I wasn't necessarily thinking them as of them as completely separate bodies of work. I was just writing songs. Um, and it's like now, like I'm currently back in New Zealand writing, I'm writing new stuff. Um, and when you're writing, you don't necessarily see the bigger picture and it kind of just ends up the cards fall how they do. And I think that it became very clear to us that they were meant to be kind of separate, like, mm -hmm. like they, they work together well as EPs. Um, and, and, and obviously thematically, they kind of they tie in in their own rights but yeah i i don't think that um i don't think that that, that, that wasn't necessarily preordained right from the start but we did I, we did kind of realize they started to split off and then we wrote a couple of the songs to fit on each one cool cool um the disco stuff i keep coming i've written it four times on there i mean i know you love your different influences that are in there I um, mean, when you go and write the songs, I know you're one of the main songwriters in there. Do you start with the lyrics or do you go with like the, the beat and the music first? A lot of times it's all coming to me at once. Like there, there'll be anything. I, I think that for me, it's it, the, the music and art created at its best is a series of questions that if you're present enough, to find the answers that are truest to yourself, you're going to create the best art. Yeah. I, and, and, and it's like, Oh, I've got an, I've got, a, does, does, do I like this riff? I don't know. I'm going to keep playing around with it. I'm going to add something in until I start to find something that I'm enjoying, whether it be a hook or whether it be a, you know, I would say probably nine times out of 10, I'm starting with some form of musical element. I'm starting with laying a synth down or laying a, a little riff down and then as soon as i start to like form an idea of a hook maybe i go off and i start writing lyrics but yeah i probably i probably start to start with like a bit of a musical bass and then and then start working the vocals in but really if i'm like on a tear of a bunch of ideas it's all kind of coming to me at once that's uh and and i'd say during that process i mean like i wrote these songs two, three years like a very long time ago three three and a half years ago oh, yeah. I, my i mean even before that like it was like yeah three and a half four years ago some of these songs were written and my process now like, i've evolved so much as a songwriter i think during that pro time i was in the really just my headspace was pretty wild and real things were happening to me and i was kind of just writing songs about real stuff so i wasn't thinking let's go into the studio today and make a song it was just kind of like i'm actually just expressing myself and doing this as an outlet and that's kind of what how how that how that came out cool uh i know we're short on time so one last question which is because i know you guys work so hard like you do your music and you tour and you do your music and you tour shall i presume we will see you again touring by the end of the year early next year yes um I, like i'd say this year is a quieter year for us because you know i think that we're at a point in our careers now where we really have to create a big moment and and put our best foot forward with whatever we do next. Um, and I'm very focused on doing that. I've currently committed to do a hundred days of writing, hmm. right, right. Every day for a hundred days I'm back. I've got my little studio set up in New Zealand and I'm just like, no, in, in the middle of nowhere, just head down trying to create something that I think will really be special um so so for this year it, we're, we're definitely not going to just be touring all year but there will be there will be a few more things um that we've that we've yet to announce for sure and nice. then i think that i think that um 2025 is going to be absolutely gigantic excellent all right well on that because we've only got 15 minutes i will um let you go and enjoy the rest of your day best of thank luck with the writing man. yeah thank you mate no and i'll see you when you get there next time thanks Josh. Cheers. have a good one bye-bye